Good morning. I am really grateful to Professor Rachel Bari for having invited me to read my poems for Prasanga Koyampu University. Poetry is an expression which is innate and integral to all human beings, perhaps from times immemorial. When we look at scriptures, when we look at the older literature, epics, they were all written in poetry. The oral forms of expression, for example, folk songs, folk traditions, folklore, was also written in poetry. I guess poetry has been the first expression for human beings. Uh, two questions which surface to mind when we talk about poetry is why do we write and more than that, what do we write? And this question may be general for writing, but also very particular for poetry. How is poetry written? Why is it written? What is the process when people write poetry? How are the words playing? What is perhaps the metaphor which is being used? Um, what is the simile? How is the metonymy functioning? Is a word really ap appropriate for a particular expression? Uh, is writing, uh, uh, you know, an activity which only engages emotional uh, outburst or, you know, is it actually as you know, what's what said, emotions recollected in tranquility, or is it much more than that? Is poetry leading us towards certain form of activism? Is poetry leading, leading us towards proclaiming the truth? How, what is it that poetry does? What is the function that poetry plays? Interestingly, poetry is that form of expression that has remained alive ever since. And not just alive, it has remained functional even in cultures. Uh, poetry also surfaces, you know, at almost all, ti all times, whether peaceful, whether times of moment, whether times of war, whether times of post-war when people have been writing anti-war poetry. So what is it that is giving an expression to poetry? And that's a very intri intriguing question. So is it that poetry uh, emerges, you know, out of self, out of person's own experience? Or is it that poetry is uh, more research oriented? I mean, do people research and then write poetry or do they write as something that kinders the heart? These are questions which are open for writers as well as readers. Uh, the poetry often is an integral part of many, many movements. We do see people tend to write songs. They sing them, they proclaim their rights. And similarly, so during festivals, uh, the songs are sung. Um, people give voice to their expressions. But whatever the purpose of poetry, I use two phrases to describe it. One is proclaiming the self, where self is central part of poetry. Can poetry be written without uh, involvement of the self? And the second uh, phrase that I use to describe poetry is creative imagination. It is the creative imagination that leads uh, to the culmination of art, where art gives an expression to life and in this uh, uh, and in this mood or in this fervor of uh, poetry um, i am going to read out a couple of uh, my poems uh, interestingly um, i'm going to uh, divide this uh, talk in three parts i'm going to read my poems which i have written in english collected over years um, I'm also going to read out my poems, which I have written in Punjabi, as my mother tongue is Punjabi. Uh, it's very interesting to see uh, certain expressions which come to human beings in their um, mother tongue. And, uh, and they find, uh, you know, the other languages as deficient to express uh, those uh, emotions. Moreover, I'm going to also read about, read some poems from Bushra Ijaz whom I have translated. Bushra Ijaz is a Pakistani woman poet. It's very interesting to see how translation enables an exchange of cultures, how translations engage two languages to speak to each other. And uh, in my whole experience process of translating Bushra Ijaz, 
bringing her into english from punjabi has been extremely interesting because this woman who's a pakistani poet uh is belongs to a similar culture of punjab that was separated during partition of india in 1947 and how there is a cultural similarity of uh, uh, of a woman who is in pakistani punjab and who gets translated by a woman from india indian punjab so uh in fact languages enable uh this coming together of uh, cultures which are in fact separated which in fact cannot uh, or which which uh, it's very difficult to uh, kind of uh, collect these cultures so it is only translation that enables them to talk to each other to interact with each other uh poetry lends its its voice to people uh when a poet writes a uh, poet does not just write for one's own self the poet also writes for others poets sometimes write for their own communities for their own people one of my poems uh, which is titled voice does one such thing voice the hot wind that is not the soul that tells itself that i am i am a voice of truth a voice that fears not a voice against injustice a voice for equality for humanity a voice full of compassion kind and heartfelt liberated and free i think this is what poetry does poetry enables people to raise the voice of truth the second poem that i choose to read is called metaphors and conceits metaphors and conceits could be understood as tools of poetry some far fetched symbols are brought together which lend meaning to each other and that's the role that metaphors and conceits play in poetry metaphors and conceits I don't need words but metaphors and conceits my love is the red rose the thorns hurt the heart in separation distanced in centuries sinister night and the haunting darkness of the caves loneliness a barren rock in the heart of the sea moments of life fleeting and the flying time one needn't explain anything the metaphor in itself engages with the meaning of the expression of heart my next poem is about a woman about a young girl called sukanya who is born out of her mother who engages and empathizes with her mother and This is a poem in which the mother and the daughter speak silently to each other. It's the last poem of the Sukanya series and this poem is called Yet to be born again. The sun emitted fire. Sukanya's eyes opened to a sight of her mother circling around the house performing course like a disciplined sire silent and speechless she looked into her mother's eyes the pearls shone brightly to meet the dullness of sukanya's eyes unspoken unsaid both shared a silent secret just the look healing wounds even without the physical tactile touch only mothers and daughters speak without words silently talking to each other sharing the common pain of body and heart sukanya lifted herself to find something moving inside her pregnant with a woeful revelation 
and attempt to hold on to the truth. It was her mother folded back in a bean-shaped sprouted seed inside her womb. Yet to be born. Yet. Sukanya so had conceived her mother to not to deliver the baby safe. Soon, a miscarriage. Another death. So this lends the voice to a woman, a girl, amplifying her mother's pain. And how painful it could be to be born a woman, to, be, to live a woman, and then to be reborn a woman, and yet not to be born again. Another poem is also about a mother who talks about the woe of her daughter and how painful or how joyful could it be to see a mother when her daughter gets into puberty. This poem is more about accepting it. It's more about asserting being a woman, about a subject which is less talked about, which is kind of stigmatized. It's a prose poem and it's called Mother's Woe. Like the woes of lovers, mothers have their woes too. Mother of a daughter hides the painful secret in her heart forever. The secret of a little daughter, girl entering puberty. Since once had woken up to find herself smeared in blood. On a blood-stained bedsheet, shocked at the revelation. First thought was of having acquired some fatal disease. Later traumatized to learn that it was a monthly cycle. Then a little girl, now a mother, the experience repeats itself. With her little daughter being prepared so that she is not traumatized as the mother was. This act of educating your daughter is not a bold act. It makes you weak every time you tell her that there is danger around her. Once when she was five, she was taught about another touch, not of care, concern, help or hug, but the bad, dangerous touch. Now, slouching into teenage, the mother is scared every minute, lest the fateful day, the day of revelation, the day of pain, the day of bleeding, growing up into a girl from a child and then a woman. How much she hates and detests that moment yet to come. But she is prepared. Prepared to wash her underclothes stain free. Prepared to teach her to use the sanitary pad. Prepared to keep the secret of her dates. The cycle to her alone. Prepared to bear the pain silently and never complain. My daughter, this has been my woe. But you will be more ready than I was. And you will raise your head high in the graceful acceptance of womanhood. You will know pain, but not to bear it silently. But to complain loudly and express yourself. You will learn to discard the secrets of your dates and the wrapping of sanitary pads in the black plastic packets or newspapers. You will learn discussing this secretive thing with your mother, father, friends and the world. For a mother, there is no better charm than seeing her daughter grow, but not without pain, not without worry, not without concern. For a mother, there is no better charm than seeing her daughter grow, but not without agony, not without fear, not without mystery. For a mother, there's no better charm than seeing her daughter grow, but not without love, not without adoration, not without affection. 
For a mother, there's no better charm than seeing her daughter grow, but not without respect, not without reverence, and definitely not without empathy. Similarly, writing in your own language is quite amplifying as it gives expression to the true feelings, which sometimes is impossible to do it in another language. I read out another poem for my daughter in Punjabi. This was after my daughter had, my 14 year old daughter had asked me if I wanted a girl or a boy. The poem is titled Meri Kuk Chun Teri Rehmat Barse. Aaj meri chauda variyan di ti ne menu puchya. Maa, tenu ti chai di si ki ik put. Main apni chati chauri kar sar uccha utha ik lamba sa lera. Te babbe agge shukar de loves rakhe. Kyunki aaj main apni ti di gunagar sabit nahi hoi. Meri ardaas उस दे होन तो पहला यही सी ये दाते मेनू एक निक्की जही जिंदड़ी दे दे तेरी दात विच मेरी होंद होवे तेरे नाल जुड़ जाए ता कुदरत विच शामिल होए ओ तेरी नस्ल नु वधान वाली होए अते सच्चाई दा रूप होए उस दी होंद दा एक मकसद होए ओ जुल्म दे खिलाफ आवाज बुलंद करे उस दे खंब आजाद होन ओ खुले आसमान विच उच्चा उड़े ता धरती ते खुल के नचे तेरा दिता आसमान भी ओदा ते तेरी धरती भी ओदी मेरी कुकछु तेरी रहमत बरसे ਤਾਂ ਦਾਤੇ ਨੇ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਧੀ ਦਾਤ ਵਿੱਚ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਮੇਰੀ ਬੱਚੜੀ ਮੈਂ ਤਾਂ ਧੀ ਹੀ ਚਾਹੀ ਸੀ ਮੈਂ ਤਾਂ ਧੀ ਹੀ ਚਾਹੀ ਸੀ ਮਾਇਆ ਨਾ ਦਾ ਪੋਇਮ ਇਨ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਇਸ ਕਾਲਡ ਮੁਕੱਦਰ ਮੀਨਿੰਗ ਡੈਸਟਨੀ ਇੱਕ ਮੁਕੱਦਰ ਏ ਕਿ ਬਾਰ ਬਾਰ ਖਾਈਏ ਇੱਕ ਮੁਕੱਦਰ ਏ ਕਿ ਖਾਲੀ ਭਾਂਡਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਫੋਲੀਏ ਇੱਕ ਮੁਕੱਦਰ ਏ कि मुट्ठी बंद कर दान दईए एक मुकद्दर ए कि हथेली खोल दान लईए एक मुकद्दर ए कि भूख न मुकदी एक मुकद्दर ए कि दो दाने भूख मिटा देंदे एक मुकद्दर ए कि रज के भी ना रजिए ते एक मुकद्दर ए कि भूखियां भी कोई भूख ना एक मुकद्दर ए कि राजे दे घर जमिए एक मुकद्दर ए कि पिखारी मापियां दे नाल बनिए ए डाडे मुकद्दर किन्ने लिखे मेरे अपने करम कि उस दी रहम ए डाडे मुकद्दर किन्ने लिखे ए डाडे मुकद्दर किन्ने लिखे आई वुड लाइक टू कंक्लूड दिस सेशन बाय रीडिंग अ फ्यू पोएम्स by Bushra Ijaz whom I translated from Punjabi into English and we can see how the languages have interacted her very small poem is called pain o yogi play the harp in such a way so that the snake that sits hidden inside me pops out it's kind of an expression to talk it's kind of those feelings which we reserve inside ourselves and how we are yearning to talk about them her another poem is about the condition of women and how as small children you know their wings are trimmed and she uses a metaphor of a bird a small bird with wings trimmed babel an address to father babel at your doorway a small bird was lying dead seeing it i ran towards it turned it upside down and saw that her wings were trimmed too she also lost her life in an effort to fly 
And the last poem that I read is Bushra Ijaz's Separation is inscribed on our bodies. In which direction are we moving? Burdensome with the weight of what moments? Dusty on the muddy path of what road? Where were we to tread? Where have we reached? Who are we? What do we seek? Wandering like ascetics from place to place. Who is cursed to groan in pain? The oak of happiness is filled with sand. The empty eyes are the dry seas. Separation is inscribed on our bodies. I hope you have enjoyed these bas this basket of poems. Thank you so much.